you're in your GCSEs and you see this question, what are you doing? Panic. But I don't want you to be panicking. So this question here is a real test of if you actually understand all of the rules we've been proving so far. Okay, so if you can answer this, it means you're pretty much an expert. So I really recommend you just bear with me. Let's go through this pro problem, take a breather, get a cup of tea, and let's do it, Mike. So we're gonna solve this problem, or this really horrible looking thing equals four. Obviously, it's all gonna simplify down to something really nice, okay? So let's just go term by term and start cleaning this up, okay? Now, for example here, one over x, I quite like that. Yeah, I'm not gonna do anything there, so I'm gonna just rewrite that, one over x. What's going on here, Mike? Yeah, it's, it's not looking good. Yeah, so we have root, now another thing here is, can you see this problem has mixed up roots, powers, roots, yeah? We wanna make everything look like one, make it uniform. So root, we explained in the last video that root is power half, and here we can refer back to rule seven. Root means the second root, yeah? What multiplies by itself to give you a certain value. There's a two there, which we don't actually write down when it comes to root, so it's x to the power of a half. So whatever's in here is all raised to the power of a half. Okay, that's what this root means. So let's change that. Now, within this we have x squared. Now remember that's a, a multiplication multiplied by x power five rooted. Now this is like our rule eight from the previous video, okay? X to the power of five, that's the power section. So this is the power section and this is the root section. So if you remember from the last video, we said that the numerator is the power and this is the root, okay? So we're gonna have x to the power of five, that's the power section, root two. Okay, the root, the fractional part will be two. Okay, now, in the denominator, this one's quite interesting because we have one over root x and then we have cubed. Okay, now what does root mean? It means power one half, okay? I'm actually just gonna do that here, instead of writing, because we're then gonna be writing a whole new line for everything, okay? Then we are cubing it. Now we discussed this in the last video, as rule six, you have a fraction raised to a power. We distribute that power to the numerator and denominator. So we're gonna be cubing the numerator, which is one, one cubed is just one, divided by x to the power of a half cubed. Now x power of a half cubed, when we described this in the last video, is just an application of three, okay, rule three. You have x to a power raised to another power, you're multiplying those powers, that would be x to the power of three over two. Yeah, a half, when you times it by three, you multiply the numerators, all a half plus a half plus a half is three over two, okay? All right, we'll, we'll come back to this in a second, plus. 2 over root x, I'm just going to write 2 over x to the power of a half. Okay, here, this is just the same as what we did with this. It's just the power section here is 3. Okay, so we 2, x, then 3, then the roots, remember, the root section is power half. Okay, now I've written over here as if there's no denominator, uh, or as if I'm going to write a denominator I mean, there's that minus, but uh, maybe I could have written that in the middle. I'm not going to write again, though. Anyway, here, minus. What does minus mean? J. Cole, flipping like reciprocals. We're taking the numerator and denominator, and we're switching them around. So one will go in the denominator, root x will go in the numerator. By the same time, I'm going to write root x as x to the power of a half. So we have x to the power of a half over 1, but I'm not going to write over 1. All of this... Remember, we've dealt with the negative is being cubed, okay? Plus, here we have x, lots of, x cubed times x, uh, root x, which is x to the power of a half, okay? To the minus two sevenths. Seems random, right? But for sure there's a reason why it's that number. Okay, now. The next thing I want to look at is what's going on here. We're taking this, so I'll write it here, but then I'm going to rub it out. We have this, which we can simplify. In fact, why don't we do it now? 
So here we're multiplying two numbers with the same base. We're using rule one. We are adding the powers two plus five over two. So instead of, uh, I'll just do it here. So we're doing two, don't know why I'm writing like that, plus five over two. So four plus five is nine over two. Okay, so let's just replace that here. X to the power of nine over two. X to the power of nine over two. Now, we're taking x to the power of 9 over 2, and we are dividing it by 1 over x power 3 over 2. Here we're doing KFC in it. So we're going to keep, change, uh, and then we're going to flip this, which will be over 1, which we don't really need to write down. Then again, we're just multiplying two numbers with the same base. We're going to add the powers. 9 over 2 plus 3 over 2, 9 plus 3 is 12 over 2 is six. Okay, beautiful mate. So what's inside this bracket is x power six. So we have x to the power of six. It's looking good. We'll deal with that in a second. Now, the next thing is over here, we can apply the same rule. In fact, the same rule that I want to apply here. So I have a number raised to a power, raised to another power, we're gonna multiply those powers. A half of three is just three and a half, uh, three over two, okay? Three over two, not three and a half, that's something different. So this is x power of three over two, which is really nice actually, because now we can subtract these. These are like terms. Here, I have two lots of x to the three over two. When I minus one of them, I just have x to the power of three over two. Okay, so this here is just x to the power of 3 over 2, and we are multiplying it by 2 over x to the power of a half. We'll deal with that in a second, which I guess actually, maybe I'll just write this here now. x power 6 raised to another power, we're going to multiply these powers, that's just x cubed. Okay, then we are multiplying it by 1 over x. Okay, what's going on here, Mike? We have x. Now here we're multiplying two numbers with the same base. We're adding the powers. This is three over two. Uh, what? This is three and a half, yeah? We're doing three plus a half. We're using rule one. But my recommendation to you guys is not to write 3.5. Keep it as a fraction. So this is three over one, six plus one, seven. So x to the power of seven over two. And look, this is why the numbers are starting to match up now, right? Which is sick. Um, another way you could have thought it, 3.5 is 7 divided by 2. 3.5 is 7 divided by 2. To the minus 2 sevenths is 4. All right. Going back to this, we have 1 over x times x over 3. So you can think of that as over 1. They join to make one fraction. You're doing x cubed divided by x. Here, we are using rule 2. We're dividing. We're going to subtract those powers. 3 minus 1 is 2, plus. Now here we're doing the same thing. Forget about the 2 for a second. We are dividing here. Remember that's over 1. So we're doing x to the 3 over 2 divided by x to the half. We're subtracting the powers. 3 over 2 minus a half, you minus the numerators. 3 minus 1 is 2 over 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1. Don't forget the 2 there though. So we have 2x to the power of 1 which I'm not going to write down. Okay, the next thing is this. Here, we have a number raised to a power raised to another power. We're going to multiply those powers together. Now, when you multiply these, this is a beautiful cross cancellation. 7 divided by 7, and then 2 divided by 2. But be very careful, there's that minus there, right? So it all cancels down to minus 1, okay? So what I've done there is I've done 7 over 2, times two sevenths, they all cancel to give you one. But we have plus x times x to the power of minus one, okay, is four. Now here what's going on, remember this is one, isn't it? So you're multiplying two numbers with the same base, adding the powers, rule one. You could think of this as flipping like reciprocals, j colon, that 
rule 5 and write 1 over x, then the x and the x would cancel, you're left with 1. But here, you're left with 1 minus 1, which is 0. This is rule 4. We're again left with 1. Beautiful. So this is just 1. All right. This has been, this is leaving us with a very beautiful quadratic. Okay. So we're going to move all the numbers to one side. So a positive 4 on this side will become a minus 4 on this side. This will then be 0. So we're left with x squared plus 2x. 1 minus 4 is minus 3, is 0. Now we're going to factorize x and x. 3 is prime, so it can only be 3 and 1. To make positive 2, we have plus 3 minus 1. So either x minus 1 is 0, which when you move the 1 over, x is 1. X, remember, two brackets multiplied to give 0. Either this is 0 or this is 0. Well, if x plus 3 is 0, you move the 3 over, you get minus 3. Now, if you say both of these answers are correct, you're going to make a mistake. Why is that? We need to go back to the original and notice, even though I removed it here, we have a lot of roots. Roots, my. You can't root a negative at GCSE until we get into complex numbers at A level. This is not allowed. Yeah, you cannot root uh, negatives. X has to be bigger than or actually here it has to be strictly bigger than zero because we have this in the denominator. So if x is zero, root of zero is zero, but you can't do two divided by zero. X actually has to be strictly positive. So our only solution here is x is one. So this is a really important question, guys. We actually used every single one of these rules. Super solid question. I'd recommend you guys have a go at doing it by yourself because if you can, it means you really understand your index rules. And guys, make sure you're subscribed to my channel for more content like this. Drop a like if you learned something today. And if you're more interested in my GCSE courses, then head to the link in the description. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Nice.